Fallout New Vegas has dozens of unique playstyles, all containing an assortment of available weapons to choose from. However, for this challenge, I will be choosing none at all and go bare fisted into the Mojave. Since I still wanted to base this challenge off a character from another franchise, I chose Kiro Kazuma from the Yakuza series due to his iconic brawler style. Can I beat Follow New Vegas as Kiru from Yakuza? To explain this challenge, I would need to give you a quick explanation of Kiru for those who don't know. Kiru is a member of the Yakuza, however he dislikes the violence and corruption of other members and lives by a strong code of honor and justice. As a part of this challenge, I must help out as many factions as I can, major and minor, so I can achieve one of the best possible endings in the game. Another part of this challenge is to do the side quest, as that's a large staple in the Yakuza series. Finally, the last and most important part of this challenge is that I can only use my bare fists. No unarmed weapons either. I do know it's possible to equip weapons within the Yakuza series, however, I wanted to make this challenge a bit more difficult. Now, on to starting the challenge. First, I started with character customization, which is pretty straightforward for Kiru. On to the special stats, I chose a brawler build with a focus in the strength and endurance to increase the damage to take out enemies quicker and to increase base health, which is a pretty critical for this run as my armor choice was actually just close. For my skill tags, I chose unarmed for the higher base damage, speech for, well, speech, and repair because I didn't know what else to pick. In hindsight, I should have just chosen survival for more health but it's too late now. Now onto the traits, I chose skilled for the extra skill points and wild wasteland to end up in a few extra wacky situations. Leaving Doc Mitchell's house, my first objective was to obtain a grimy business wear suit as it was the most similar to Kiru's iconic white suit. Luckily for me, I found it in a nearby Good Springer's house. Now I was able to officially start this challenge. Starting the run like usual, I completed the tutorial and then moved on to the first quest of Ghost Town Gunfight. Before I met Ringo, I helped Trudy fix her radio, which was one of the only two times I used the repair skill. I met up with Ringo and gathered both Sunny and Trudy for the fight. During the fight, in my current state, my punches bounce right off the Powder Gangers, but hopefully soon that will change. Once I defeat the Powder Gangers, I make my way over to Prim, where Gecko showed me who's boss and whipped me in the place. Once in Prim, I took out both convicts and entered the casino to begin Prim's questline. Then, needing to save the deputy, I entered the Bison Steve Hotel, where I was immediately met with hostility from the front desk. The next few convicts were pretty difficult, and this took me a couple of attempts before I managed to get past and save the deputy. It required the use of a stealth boy that was picked up back in Good Springs off Joe Cobb, sneaking up behind each of the convicts and fisting their ass using a secret Yakuza technique. Once the deputy was saved, I needed to establish a sheriff in the town. I needed to head over to the Mojave Outpost to speak the night. So on my way there, I made a quick start by the Jackals to collect some XP, but this turned out to be difficult. Since I was still at a very low level, my fists were pretty weak. It also didn't help that I did not have many healables either. After a few tries before I can get past them, I finally got out of there, where I saw this wonderful sight of nature on my way out. A bark scorpion getting jiggy. I went around the building to get the last members of the Jackals, where he kind of just stood still. Once he was taken care of, I leveled up where I put some points into science to get it to level 30 where I can then head back to Prim and establish Prim Slim to be the new sheriff. At the Mojave Outpost, I picked up the usual quests from Jackson and Ghost. I started by clearing out the ants, which was way harder than I thought it would be. After putting up a tough fight and about ready to accept defeat, a hero came along. Once she took out all the ants, I headed to Nippin, going around the jackals to avoid a dangerous fight. Since I wanted to help out as many people as possible, I headed into the building just left after entering Nipton, where a man named Boxcars is found. Boxcars will give a quest to save some other powder gangers from Legion slavers, which I could do later. Reporting back to the Mojave outpost to turn it into two quests, I proceeded to continue my journey, going my normal route up the hill and getting the ambush on the Jackal members. On my way to Novak, I stopped by the Legion camp just to get the marker to come back when I was more powerful, and I continued down the road where I ran into some Vipers. Expecting a difficult brawl from the Vipers, I was wrong. The vipers threw explosives over in my direction and ended up blowing themselves up instead, leaving wounded vipers that went down easily. In Novak, I grabbed Boone's quest finding the bill of sale and asking Jeannie to meet me out in front of the dinosaur where her head had a rapid unexpected disassembly. Thinking Novak was done, forgetting about the Repcon Center, I left for Boulder City. There I spoke to Jessup and convinced him to release the hostages, helping out the Great Cons and the NCR. My next stop was Freeside. Upon entering Freeside, I was attacked by a thug. To start off helping Freeside for the better, I began with the Atomic Wrangler quest to search for three pro- I mean escorts. I quickly gathered Old Ben from the North Strip entrance and Beatrix Russell from Old Mormon Fort, who were the first two candidates. But for the last one, I needed to head over to Cerulean Robotics where I can find Fisto. Due to my low science skill, I couldn't hack the terminal, so I left in search of enough XP to level up. Luckily, I had chosen the Wild Wasteland perk where a gaggle of grandmas would be waiting for me outside, ready to beat me down with their rolling pins. 
They gave just enough XP to level up, but I still didn't have enough science skill to hack the terminal. I left to find a science magazine so I can boost the skill just up enough. I left for the Good Spring Schoolhouse, where conveniently a science magazine can be found. Once I had returned, I hacked the terminal after about a half dozen attempts, and then once I got in, I realized I forgot to grab the holotape. Speaking to Ralph from Mick and Ralph's, I commissioned him to write the holotape for me. I turned back to Fisto and uploaded the programming. I returned to the Atomic Wrangler and completed the quest. The kings were next on my list. Like usual, I tried to fight Oris, but this time he was too powerful for me, as I didn't have the Piercing Strikes perk to go through his armor. I tried hiring him, but my medicine and intelligence were too low to pass either of the checks. I put the king's quest on hold for the moment and headed over to the old Mormon fort to see what Julie Farkas may need me to do. I was first tasked to help some people get clean and bring them back to the fort for recovery. Before either of the addicts would go to the fort, I needed to take care of their dealer, Dixon which can be done with a simple speech check, but to fully convince the addicts I needed a way higher speech skill, so I also had to put this quest on hold. I entered the Silver Rush in hopes to get some XP from their quest, starting as a guard, and then I continued their quest to make the delivery to the strange man. This was useless, as it didn't give me any XP at all. I decided to start the King's Quest again, and I hired Oris, where to pass his intelligence check, I used Mentas to boost my intelligence. I continued the King's Quest like normal, bouncing around Freeside until it came time to defuse the situation between Pacer and the NCR. Leveling up, I dumped my skills into Speech and Unarmed, as well as I picked up the Perk Stone Wall to decrease the melee damage I take, and not to be knocked down. With enough Speech skill, I convinced both addicts to return to the Old Warren Fort for help, and I continued the Follower's Quest. I convinced the Garrets to assist the Followers, as I already completed their quest line. This was not Julie's first option to help with the medical supplies, but it still works. Their quest was now complete. However, they did give me a lead on an unmarked quest, one I didn't realize until editing this video. As I was done with all the groups in Freeside, besides the Silver Rush, I helped the Crimson Caravan Company just outside Freeside. My next task took me to the Mojave Outpost where I had to convince Cass to sell her caravan company, which was easy enough. The second task I was given was over at the Atomic Wrangler. I basically had to infringe on basic workers' rights and force Henry to quit the company. At the Atomic Wrangler, I somehow got transported back to the silent era of films as there was no sound at all. And Henry was glitched, so I couldn't talk to him either. Trying to leave and enter the Atomic Wrangler again, my game crashed. Once I was back in, I illegally terminated Henry and returned to McLafferty for their last quest, Pressing Matters, where I was tasked to find the source of new bottle caps appearing in the wasteland. At the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters, I ran through all the bots and made my way over to the cap press, where I stripped out of all the important components and I left to return to McLafferty for one last time. Now, it was finally time to enter the strip, where my first goal was to go to the tops and deal with Benny. This time, I remember I can talk to Swank and allow me to search Benny's room, where I could meet Yes Man. Speaking to Swank again, I convinced him that Benny needed to go. So, I went back up to his room and took care of him. After a barrage of punches straight to his cranium, he finally fell over in defeat and severe brain trauma. Before moving on to any of the quest lines, I decided to head over to Nello's airbase to assist the boomers in every way I can. On my way there, I spared George from my wrath and dodged the incoming artillery fire. Speaking to Pearl and then the others, I picked up all the quests the boomers would give me. I started with Young Hearts to help Jack find love, and I went back and forth from the Crimson Caravan Company and the airbase until Janet could leave her job and meet Jack. To start Sunshine Boogie, I headed over to Helios 1, which I conveniently marked in the map earlier, and collected all the broken array parts. At the Nellis Array field, I repaired the solar panels and headed inside so I could drive the ants out and restart the generators. I turned in all the quests and began the final one to raise the bomber from Lake Mead. The bomber was raised and I returned to Pearl where I was granted their assistance. On my way out of the airbase, I picked up the nearby Brotherhood of Steel holotape and I was off to the Repcon headquarters to pick up the next. After failing the terminal hack for yet another half dozen times, I leveled up where I picked up the Super Slam perk. This perk is probably one of the most helpful perks to pick in an unarmed or melee build as it gives me the chance of knocking my opponents down even when they already have that debuff applied. I made it up through the floors and found the second hollow tape. Now I needed to pick up the last tape near Hidden Valley. I quickly grabbed the hollow tape and ran as I did not have enough strength to fight. I went into the Brotherhood of Steel's bunker to begin their quest line. Finding Dobson's bunker, I destroyed his radio and left. Since I already grabbed all three hollow tapes, my next task was already completed. The next assignment was to grab reports from three different Brotherhood scouts around the map. Conveniently, the first one was nearby. Inconveniently, there was a lot of bark scorpions, which the scout thankfully took out for me. The second scout was just outside Nipton, up along the train tracks. For the third and final scout, I had to go to Novak and head northeast, where I ran into a young gecko, who really fucked my shit up. Once I died, I realized I never grabbed my items from the container in the bunker. Once I reached third scout, the gecko was still chasing me, but once again, the scout took it out for me. 
Back at the bunker, I grabbed my stuff and spoke to the elder where I was told to speak to Lorenzo. Lorenzo assigned me to be their new HVAC repair technician and sent me out on a parts run across the map. I personally hate this quest as I feel like it's a little complicated if you don't know the route for some of the vaults. As well as there's so many enemies within the vault you enter. The first vault I entered was vault 11. Making my way through the floors of the vault, I found the differential pressure controller. In need of more health supplies, I headed over to Doc Mitchell's to buy some, but he glitched while eating and made this face the entire time. Vault 22 was my next destination. For this vault, I had to head down a few levels, open up a cave entrance, and head back into the vault from a room that was previously blocked off. I spent close to 20 minutes figuring out how to get into the cave as I completely forgot how to. As I went through each floor trying to find out what I needed to do, I took out every sport carrier I found. Luckily, I'd pick up the Super Slam perk earlier and I was able to take them out with ease. Once I finally entered the cave, Mantis from Kung Fu Panda fucked me up. Finally making a pass and into the correct room, I collected the HEPA filters and left before Mantis can come back with the rest of the Fearsome 5. The final vault I needed to go to was Vault 3. Vault 3 is guarded by the Fiends as it is their base of operations. As I could not take all of them at the same time, I put this quest on hold and went back to the strip. From there, I entered the Ultralux Casino and picked up Beyond the Beef quest. In the investigator's room, I noticed once again there was no sound. Another odd glitch was that the white gloves did not ambush me. Trying to leave the area, the game crashed. As soon as I entered the game, I was attacked by the white gloves. And after a long fight with a quick break to play ring around the rosy, I made it out. I continued the quest like normal, sneaking downstairs and saving Ted. I returned him to his father and completed this quest. Continuing with helping out the strip, I headed over to the tops and spoke to Tommy to gather four different entertainers. The first one was Billy Knight, a comedian within the strip. The second one was found in the Atomic Wrangler, a ghoul named Hadrian. The third entertainer was found in Novak, a singer from New Reno. And the last entertainer was a lonely drifter along the side of the road, a musician. Once I gathered them all, I returned to Tommy to collect my reward. To continue being helpful to the strip, I decided to help Michelangelo get some inspiration to make more signs. So I went around the wasteland taking photos for inspiration for him. Now with a good portion of the quest I can find on the strip to complete, I tried to enter in Vault 3 for the Brotherhood's quest. Getting one guy to attack me at the time was extremely difficult and I only managed to get past three when I decided just to book it into the vault. With my speech skill, I was able to convince the fiends that I was their drug mule for the great cons, and I entered the vault with no hostility. I retrieved the part and returned back to Lorenzo to hand over the parts. The Brotherhood's quest was finally complete. This leveled me up and I was able to pick up the Piercing Strikes perk, which would allow me to ignore 15 points of damage threshold. An amazing buff to my build. With the Brotherhood is still complete, the only faction I've yet to help was the great cons. Going back to the quest I picked up earlier, I headed to the Legion camp outside Novak and rescued the Powder Gangers. Luckily, there were some nearby NCR troops and they helped me take out the Legion. To save more people from the Legion, I headed over to Cottonwood Cove where three slaves can be found. Since I was asked to meet Caesar already, I had to enter the fort and speak to him before I can rescue the slaves. Speaking to Caesar, he requested I destroy the bunker. Upon entering the bunker, I ran to the terminal to disable the turrets. Again, this took around six attempts because I simply just suck at hacking. I quickly went through beating every Protectron up and upgrading the Securitrons, telling Caesar I destroyed the bunker and left to continue saving the slaves. I simply bought the slaves from the canyon runner and let them go. First, before I can begin assisting the right cons, I needed to begin with the NCR quest line. To quickly explain why I chose this quest line, was that it's one of the better endings that results in the least amount of people dying and the most order being put into place, overall helping out the Mojave. Since I already completed almost all the tasks for the NCR ending, I was able to go through the quest till I was sent to the Hoover Dam, where I had to speak to Colonel Moore, where then I was sent to deal with the Great Cons. Since I wanted to assist the Great Cons, I picked up Oh My Papa and began to assist them, starting with Anders, a drug runner caught by the Legion, I let him down and made it over to the fort where the Legion slave ledger can be found to convince Regis. The last task was to assist Melissa. Melissa can be found in an encampment at the back of Junction Quarry, a place filled with Deathclaws. To test my strength, I straight up bullied a young Deathclaw thinking I was powerful enough to go through or at least sneak my way around. But after a few attempts going around the front, I needed to enter from behind. I went back to Good Springs and traveled north, running into Anders again, and then glitching my way into odd areas and up on the hill to bug out the Casadors so they won't attack me. Once I got past and on top of the hill, I then had to deal with more Deathclaws. Took me a couple of tries with the correct timing to sneak past the Deathclaws only to make it to a rock that is about halfway there. I played peekaboo around this rock with the Deathclaws for a while as they seem to be glitch and won't walk behind this rock even after they see me. They kind of just forget. Anyways, after a few minutes of trying my best to sneak past, I just climbed on top of the rock which sent all the Deathclaws running away in fear. I quickly ran up the hill and spoke to Melissa. And then I returned back to Red Canyon and convinced Papa Khan to no longer assist the Legion and to leave the Mojave. Next up was the Americas, 
where I was given a lead. So I headed straight over there to complete the quest like normal. Blackmailing Cashino and speaking to Troiki and getting him to destroy the shipment of guns. Once I had a meeting with Big Sale and Nero, I made them shoot each other as I watched and then proceeded to beat up the survivor. Since I was in town, I entered the Lucky 38 to complete Mr. House quest and get some quick easy XP, only for me to turn around on him and break into the control room and take him out. Once he was out of the picture, I needed to report back to Colonel Moore which would task me of dealing with the Brotherhood of Steel. All I needed to do was return to Hidden Valley and convince the Elder to support the NCR. This does have a negative impact on the NCR reputation, but who cares. On my way to Hidden Valley, I made a quick stop in Sloan to fix Snuffle's legs and repair their generator. Once the speaking was done with the Elder, I returned back to the dam and was tasked with keeping the NCR's president safe. I took an engineer's uniform nearby and headed up to the Vertebrate landing platform where an engineer can be found with a backup detonator in his pocket. I pickpocketed the detonator and tried reporting it to the ranger, but he had better things to do besides listening to an active threat. Once he would finally listen, the president was then escorted out safely. Now it is time for the Battle of the Hoover Dam. I fought my way through waves of the Legion, beating them down with the help of the NCR and Brotherhood. After making it outside, I made my way across the dam, fighting through every inch and not cowering behind a barricade as the NCR does my job. At the Legates camp, I fought the guards up front, which was way harder than expected. Once they were defeated, I made my way over to the Praetorian guards, where I found a technique that would allow me to get in a hit or two on the guards before they can punch me back. And then with this technique, I made it through the guards. After taking the last one out, it gave me just enough XP to level up. However, it did not show up the level up screen, so I was not allowed to pick up a new perk or skills before the battle with the Legate. Knowing that the Legate would be difficult, I prepared. After making the Legate to miss his guards, I fought him in a 1v1. After a failed few attempts, I accidentally made a quick save right after the dialogue as the Legate was running towards me, screwing me over. After a couple more tries with this quick save, I was able to knock him down with the Super Slam perk. I decided to put down another quick save as the Legate was given up. I kind of found out this glitches the game in an odd way and very quickly where upon loading up the save the legate will be standing but will not move and then fall back down to the ground allowing me to get in a punch or two hopefully triggering the perk again the legate was defeated and the ntr claimed victory proving that yes you can beat follow new vegas as kiro from yakuza Sorry for the longer wait on this video, I'm trying to get down a good upload schedule that will allow me to spend more time on each video, either writing better scripts, going through longer games, as spending more time on editing to allow me to make overall better content. If I missed anything in this video that I should have done, have any ideas for challenge runs, or suggestions for other games, please let me know in the comments down below, and while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.